Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technology Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. Okay, on my previous video, okay, which is the part 30 series discussion on filter design, I have did a comprehensive discussion. How can we actually do a filter transformation from low pass filter to high pass filter? This video, okay, I'm going to continue the discussion again on filter transformation. Okay, for this video, I'm going to concentrate on low pass filter to band pass filter and also from low pass filter to band stop filter. Okay, so basically this will be the objective of this video. Okay, so this will be the part 31 series discussion on filter design. Okay, so guys, in fact, I strongly urge you guys, before you come to this video, okay, at least please take a look on the part 30 series discussion on filter design. Okay, so in order to fully understand how can we actually achieve this filter transformation? Okay, but I have also put the playlist okay, on the filter design under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a comprehensive discussion on filter design. So guys, if you're keen to know more okay, about filter design, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Okay, so this is my email. Okay, if you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email, okay? Or if not, I strongly urge you guys to send me your question through the comment, okay? In order to have a faster response. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. This is what I have did earlier on on the previous discussion, part 30 series discussion. I have demonstrated how can we actually do a filter transformation from low pass filter to high pass filter. Okay, so basically this diagram here show the lump element okay, basically having the characteristics of low pass filter. So basically if you put under this kind of configuration, okay, you actually will be able to achieve a low pass filter. Okay, again, with the different value of lump element, okay, and you can also see that the capacitor become an inductor and the inductor become a capacitor. With this, you actually achieve a high pass filter. So basically on my part 30 series discussion, I have shown it to you step by step. How can we actually convert the C to L? Okay, and then in order to complete the full discussion to have a high pass filter, basically this is done early on on the part 30 series discussion. This video, as I mentioned earlier on, will be mainly concentrated on low pass filter to band pass filter and also low pass filter to band stop filter. Okay, this diagram here show you basically in short, okay, how can you actually do a filter transformation? For example, low pass filter to band pass filter. Okay, when the low pass filter is a inductor, okay, so basically you can replace the inductor with the L and C in series. And what is the value of the L and C? The formula is actually written over here. So basically from here you can see that the key idea is to transform the L into L and C in order to achieve this band pass filter. Again, if the low pass filter is a capacitor, you can see that the L and C will be so-called shunt and the value how to calculate is also over here. Okay, so beside from low pass filter to band pass filter, I have also this video okay, will be discussing how can we actually achieve low pass filter to band stop filter? Okay, basically for this case here now, for low pass filter that is L, okay, you can see that the L and C will be in parallel under the band stop. While the low pass filter is a capacitor, over here you can see that the L and C they are in series in order to achieve the configuration of band stop filter. Okay, instead with so many work, okay, let me work out an example so that you know exactly how to do this filter transformation. Okay, so basically, as I mentioned earlier on, the first task that I'm going to do is transform from low pass filter to band stop filter. Okay, so basically on the part 30 series discussion, okay, I have discussed how can we actually design this low pass filter. Okay, so if you want to take a close look on the part 30 series discussion before you come into this part 31 series discussion. Okay, so this graph is basically I have shown on the previous slide. Okay, so for this task, Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform the low pass filter into band pass filter. Okay, so from here you can see that the L will be the L and C in series. 
the C in the low pass will be the L and C in Shan. Okay, so basically the first one will be C. So basically you can see that C will be replaced by the L and C in Shan. And basically you can see over here, I replace the C with L and C Shan together. So next will be the L. Okay, so basically L is actually L and C in series. Again, from here you can see that I have replaced the L and C in series over here. As for this case here, again, it will be the same. And then this thing continue. Okay, so etc. Okay, so basically, let me quantify a few things here. Okay, so basically for this time round, okay, so basically I'm going to design a band pass filter from 1 to 2 gigahertz. Okay, so let me be very clear. Okay, so basically this rule doesn't mean that the band pass filter need to be at 1 to 2 gigahertz. So in short, okay, whatever band pass filter the range, okay, will be the same method how you design this lump element component here. So in short, let's say I'm going to design from 1 to 3. Okay, again, I can apply all this set of formula that I showed to you in this video. Okay, so once I know my so-called F1 and F2, I can calculate my F now, okay, which is the center point of the band pass filter, okay, which is equal to square root F1, F2. So F1 and F2 is 1 kit and 2 kit, and from here I can calculate, which is 1.414 gigahertz. Okay, this will be the fractional bandwidth, which the formula is F2 minus F1 over F0. So F2 is equal to 2 kit, F1 is equal to 1 kit. This is what I calculated earlier on, which is 1.414 gigahertz. So from here, I can calculate my fractional bandwidth as 0 0.707. Okay, so with this, I'm ready to design this bandpass filter. Okay, but like I mentioned earlier on, okay, so keep this in mind. Okay, so this formula doesn't really constrain just on the bandpass filter from 1 to 2. It can be any number, 3 to 4, 5 to 6, etc. So basically, how you do will be exactly the same. Okay, so over here, okay, you can see all the numbers, all the formulas are all included over here. So if you look hard, basically, they are all the formulas. Okay, for example, this C here, okay, you can see that the formulas is actually from the little graph over here. Okay, so basically, you can see that they are the same. Okay, so let's take a few look. Huh? So the C, Okay, replaced by this formula, you can see that this formula is here. This formula is actually over here. Then this part here, which is the L, okay, which is replaced by this formula. You can see that this is a C term. The formula is here. The L term, the formula is here. So basically, everything you just copy, and then we are ready to move this on okay, to the design of the band pass filter. Okay, so once I've done this here, so basically, these are all the numbers, all the formulas I have written on my previous slide. Okay, so basically this will be the part 30 series discussion on the low pass filter design. Okay, so basically I just put this here okay, in order to make the discussion complete. Okay, so this is what I have calculated earlier on, okay, which is the F0 and the fractional bandwidth. Okay, so once with this, I'm ready to do the calculation. Okay, so basically this will be known as L1. This will be known as C2. This will be, sorry, L1 and C1. This will be C2 and L2, and this will be L3, and this will be C3. Okay, so basically over here, you can see that this L1 calculation, okay, basically how you calculate is basically will be from this formula here. Okay, so this will be the fractional bandwidth, which is 0 0.707. Okay, R0 will be 50 ohm. You can see over here, so it will be 50 ohm. Okay, this W0 is equal to 2 pi F. Okay, so if you still remember, F0 is equal to... 1.414 gigahertz. This C1 will be basically the G1 term, which is 0.618 over here. Okay, so if you punch your calculator, okay, you should be able to obtain this 6.438 nano Henry. Okay, so therefore this L okay, need to be the number of 6.438 nano Henry okay, for this configuration okay, from low pass filter to band pass filter. Okay, so next I'm going to calculate the C value. Okay, so this will be the set of formula. Okay, you can see that I rewrite the whole set of formula over here. C1 will be the same from G1, which is 0 0.618 over here. Okay, R0 is equal to 50. Okay, so this will be 2 pi F, okay, which is 1.414 gigahertz. This fractional bandwidth will be equal to 0 0.707. Again, if you punch your calculator, okay, you will definitely get this number, 1.968 picofarad. Okay, so basically this will be the C1 value here. Okay, so next, okay, for the L2 value here, okay, so this will be the L2 formula. You can see that I just copy the L2 formula over here. Okay, R0 will be equal to 50. L2, okay, basically will look at G2, which is 1.618 over here. Okay, so this W0 is equal to 2 pi F0. 
and this is the fractional bandwidth, which is equal to 0 0.707. Again, if you punch your calculator, okay, you should be able to get this 12.88 nano Henry. Okay, before I continue, just in case I have some calculation error, okay, so basically I would like to apologize first. Okay, so I only did this one time calculation, I never do a double check. Okay, but the key idea for this video is to show you the method. How can we actually convert from low pass filter to band pass filter? Okay, so if the value are slightly wrong, okay, so uh, I'd like to sincerely apologize first. Okay, but hopefully with this video, you get the idea how can we actually do the filter transformation. Okay, so this will be the C2, okay, which is the C2 value from here. Okay, so basically the formula is over here. So this will be 0 0.707. Arnold is 50. Again, this is 2 pi f. And this L2 will be looking at this G2, which is 1.618 over here. So if you punch your calculator, okay, I think you shouldn't have any issue to get this capacitor value C2 here. This L3 okay, will be from this L3 here. Okay, so sorry, this will be the L3 here. Okay, so L3 will be equal to, the formula is actually here. You can see over here. So this is 0 0.707, this will be 50. Okay, so this is 2 pi f, C3 will be equals to G3, which is equals to 2. So if you punch your calculator, you should be able to get this. Same for C3, okay, so basically C3 will be copied from here. Okay, apologize, this is supposed to be C3. Okay, so basically this C3 is equals to 2. Okay, and then this R0 is 50, W0 is 2 pi f. And this is a fractional bandwidth, and you can actually get this 6.368 picofarad. Okay, so basically with this, okay, you can actually design your band pass filter. Okay, so basically these are all the numbers I calculated on the previous slide. So basically with this so-called lump element with all this value here, okay, so basically you actually achieve a band pass filter response. Okay, earlier on, I showed you a low pass filter, and basically from there you work it on, you actually transform from low pass filter to band pass filter. Okay, before I continue, I like to urge you guys again to help this channel. Okay, when you actually like this video, okay, this video will have a better chances to reach up to a larger audience. So guys, help me by like this video. If you have learned something from this video, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Let me continue. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss on low pass filter to band stop filter. Okay, so basically earlier on, this is what I have showed to you earlier on also. This is actually discussed on a part 30 series discussion. Okay, so now instead of low pass to band pass, now I'm actually going to do a low pass to band stop filter. Okay, so the C, okay, basically it will be in series, you can see from here. Okay, the L will be in parallel, as you can see from here. And the formulas is actually all all inside this equation here. Okay, so these are the same. So basically for this time round, I'm going to do a band stop from one gig to two gigahertz. So that basically the band will be band stop. Okay, again, the calculation is quite similar as band pass filter. Okay, F0 will be equal to 1.414 gigahertz. Same as the fractional bandwidth, which is equal to 0 0.707. Okay, so with this, again, I'm ready to calculate the band stop filter characteristic. Okay, so now I want to obtain the numerical value of the lump element. Okay, so basically it's shown over here. So all the formulas is what I showed to you on the previous page. Okay, how you work it up is exactly the same how I work it up on the band pass filter. But let me quickly do a few so that you have a better idea how to actually do this. Okay, so this is L1. Okay, so you can see that this is L1. This is C1. So L1 is equal to this formula, which I plug it here. Okay, R0 is 50. Okay, this is equal to 2 pi f. Okay, C1 is basically this value, which is 0 0.618 over here. This is the fractional bandwidth. And if you punch your calculator, you should be able to get this 12.88 nano Henry. As for C1, okay, the formula is here. Okay, so basically you can see that I rewrite the formula over here. So C1 is actually equals to 0 0.618. Okay, you can see from here, this is the fractional bandwidth, which is 0 0.707. R0 is 50, and then 2 pi F0. And then from here, you can see that I actually successfully calculate the C1 value, which is 0 0.984 picofarad. Okay, for L2, okay, L2 will be over here. Okay, you can see that the formula, I actually jot it down over here. Okay, how I get all this number, okay, I think uh, you have a better idea how I actually achieve all this value. I do not want to make this video so lengthy. 
Okay, but over here you can see that okay, I have also successfully transformed from low pass filter to band stop filter. Okay, and all the value that you calculate earlier on, okay, on the previous slide, okay, you can see they are actually all written over here. Okay, so now from here you can see that I have also successfully transformed from low pass filter to band stop filter. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.